was on December the 12th is actually 10 voters higher than it was today on your certified comment. So we'll just sit this over here right now. <coughs> Wait, wait, Mr. Clark, if you would uh, accept that and mark that as uh, the first document presented at the proceeding. All right. <clears throat> Fact number two. During the time frame allowed by law to collect some petitions, the goal organization sent via first class mail a petition to each of the individuals on that voter registration list. Fact number three. From that initial mailing, 13,900 envelopes, I should say at least 13,900 envelopes, representing over 1,520 supposedly registered Madison County voters were returned by the United States Post Office as undeliverable. These envelopes I present to the County Commission right there as Exhibit B. Fact number four, from a list of over 1,500 names that were not able to be reached by the United States Post Office, the Office of the Supervisor of Elections, as required by law, sent address confirmations to 299 of those individuals. And please listen carefully for this next bit of information is critical. 100%, all 299 were returned by the United States Post Office to the Supervisor of Elections, to which the Supervisor of Elections, according to the laws of the state of Florida, placed all 299 names on, a, on an inactive voter list. Fact number five, of the 11,610 names on the list as of July 30th, it has now been determined by the Supervisor of Elections that 120 of these people are in fact dead. They are deceased. It has also been determined that 16 of the registrations were duplicates, which technically is not possible, but they were there nonetheless. Fact number six, our Supervisor of Elections has stated that although your decision today could be based on three different criteria, the criteria that is most likely to be used would probably be the voter registration list as of June 30th, I beg your pardon, July 30th of this year, the petition drive. And a footnote to this thought is that the Council for the Board has indicated that back in the early 1950s, over 50 years ago, the State Attorney has ruled that the petition date should be considered the date the petitions were turned in. However, According to the information I received, Santa Rosa County here in Florida, as recently as three years ago, legally used the date of the starting of the signing of the petitions as the date to count the voter registration list. So, commissioners, please understand when I say to you that we are receiving mixed signals. You know, but as best as I can tell, nowhere in the Florida statutes does it say exactly what date is to be used. And here's the final fact, fact number seven. If this board decides to make a decision today based on what is right and what is accurate, then that decision will include the undisputable proof that the integrity of the voter registration list for Madison County, Florida, as of July 30th of this year, was non-existent. And that the voter registration list for Madison County, as of that date, July 30th, was at best an inaccurate list skewed with literally thousands of names of people that cannot be reached by other sources as defined by the Florida statutes, which in this case the other sources is the United States, United States Post Office. And here I'll give you from the Florida statutes, uh, paragraph 98.065 is highlighted both uh, paragraph 4A and 4B that provides, let me, let me read one thing here real quick, that provides for the use from uh, information from other sources which indicates that a registered voter's legal residence might have changed. And I certainly think we have proof that we believe that the legal residence has changed. So, <clears throat> and that thus far, and that thus far, 100%, over 435 names from that skewed list have been proven by the supervisor of elections to be declared either inactive or deceased or a duplicate. But let's not assume that all 1,520 names there that are considered there, uh, and that are considered undeliverable by the United States Post Office, let's don't, let's don't assume that all uh, of those people are in fact not there. Just for the sake of discussion, let's try to calculate what is right, what is right, based on the fact that maybe 75% of those people should be declared inactive. And we're going to calculate on 75%, even though the results thus far 
indicate that we should consider 100%. And let me remind you that from that list, the supervisor of elections sent out 299 names. 299 came back. Not 99%, not 98%, but 100% came back as undeliverable. And when she got those back, she removed those names from the active list. So if you ask the supervisor of elections for an accurate count of voter registration on any given date in the past, whether it was on the day of the petitions were started or the date the petitions were turned in, she simply cannot give you an accurate count. It could take a couple of weeks, a couple of months of extra effort to determine an accurate roll call. How can the commission make an accurate decision, keyword accurate, how can the commission make an accurate decision on, per, on the percentage of petitions turned in if the commission does not have an accurate count of the voters of Madison County? However, if you choose, <coughs> you can decide what is right based on the proof that, that is shown to be accurate. There's, there's several things you can do, including nothing. There's several things you can do. And remember, as I'm sure the council will agree, you can decide to do this or not do this any way you deem appropriate. But here's my suggestion, and a suggestion that clearly places the responsibility of deciding this issue in the hands of our voters. In the hands of our voters. According to, to Ms. Williams, uh, there was 11,600 plus or minus names that were in the list as of July the 30th. If we take away 75% of those, and in that 75%, we also confirm that we also include the ones that are 120 that we know are dead. We take away the 16 that we know that are duplicates, confirmed by the supervisor of elections. We take away 75%, uh, yeah, which is 1,140 names. That gives maybe 10,470 names a number that should be considered as a maximum number of potential registered voters as of July 30th, <coughs> with a strong likelihood that the actual number of voters is several hundred less than that. We're still keeping 400 out there and maybe land. So if we have the 10,478, and then we do it by the 25%, of course that number now is going to be 2,620. There's 2,693 petitions confirmed by the Supervisor of Elections, which gives 73 petitions more than needed to have this issue put before the voters of Madison County. Last thought. <coughs> Commissioners, this is my final thought on how you might decide to go forward. This could be and should be a fairly, a fairly simple decision for you to make, and that decision should be based on whether the criteria to place an issue on the ballot as established by the Florida statutes, has been met beyond a reasonable doubt by the evidence presented here today. A huge number of Madison County residents and business owners, at the risk of having their names placed in the newspaper, have had the courage to take the step necessary to say that they want to see this issue on the ballot for the people to decide. I would recommend that you give the people the right to decide on this issue once and for all. Another option in the fact that we don't have an accurate total today, excuse me, that you could do today is that you could allow Ms. Williams a time period, same within the Florida statutes, maybe the next week, 10 days or so, to do the best she can to, give an, to get an accurate number. There is a possibility that we can get enough back in that time period to still provide for the election, for the election to take place by January the 27th and to allow for the 30-day notice to the public of the election. <coughs> or, you could make a decision based on the fact that of the 299 of this 1,500 that were sent out, 100% were bad. You could make a decision that 100% of these are bad. Or, you could make a decision not to go with a, an accurate list. So you can make a lot of different decisions. So, do you have any questions? Oh, let me let put that before I go any further. If I may, <coughs> this is not one of those. This was mailed September 15th. This one was mailed September 23rd. This was returned by the post office. It was actually came in on Saturday, December the 11th. Both of these were kind of came in on Saturday, December 11th, which means that they're still coming back. So when I say that to be the maximum number concerned, that's what, what I mean by that. <coughs> also, here's one that was sent to Mr. Phil Hurd. And he sent this back. He says, we no longer live in Florida. Please correct your records. We are registered to vote in some county, town county, I think, in Georgia. 
So they're no longer, but they're on our list. They're on our list. So I appreciate your time, and uh, do I have any questions?